Hello, my name is Ivan Damko and I am Chief Cryptographer here at Patricia and also Professor in Computer Science at Aarhus University in Denmark. I'm here today to tell you about uh, multi-party computation, what that is how, and how we do it. Um, and I think we should start with an example. So let's say we have a bunch of people in the same line of business uh, and they're interested in figuring out uh, what is the average of our salaries. Right. That could be an interesting thing to know. Am I earning much less than the average of what people earn in this line of business? But obviously, there's also some privacy concerns, right? I mean, it's not clear everybody wants to just uh, reveal to everybody else how much they're, they're making. But fortunately, that's not necessary. We can just use multi-party computation, and this will solve the problem. Let, let's say we have four people. I call them P1 up to P4 here. And let's say that they have salaries, uh, A, B, C, and D. So, so A, B, C, and D are numbers. Um, and then what, what the first guy does, for instance, is he's, he's going to select four random numbers. So let's call them A1 up to A4. And these are randomly chosen, except that this condition that they have to sum together to the salary of the first guy. And then what, what you do is that you give, let's say, the fourth number here privately to this guy, the fourth, the fourth guy in this game here. And you give the third number to the third guy and the second number to the second guy and you keep the last, the last number to yourself. And the first important thing to notice here is that even one guy, say, say the fourth guy here, even if he gets something from P1, he learns nothing from that about P1 salary because that's just a random number and from his point of view the other numbers could be absolutely anything and then uh, all the other guys do exactly the same thing. So the second guy will choose his numbers B1 up to B, B4. I'm just gonna take the time to write them all for the third guy and the fourth guy. Uh, and we have, have of course the same sum relation here that all the numbers in the row sum to the salary in that row, right? So now you can see that, that let's take the fourth guy's example here. He has received four numbers, the four numbers in that column. So we're going to ask this guy to please take all the numbers that you received and add them together. So you add all the numbers in your column and you get a sum. Let's call this S4 because it's the fourth guy's sum, right? And the third guy does exactly the same thing. And the idea is that we're going to make these sums public. So, so the fourth guy is going to tell everyone, this is the sum I arrived at. And the same thing, but S2 and S1 here. So I claim if, if we sum up all, all these guys here, in fact, what we're going to get is the sum of all the salaries. So that's going to be A plus B plus C plus D. So let's take a moment to figure out why is that the case? Well, because the thing is, these 16 numbers in, in, in my table here, right? what we're doing is really we're summing all those numbers. There are two ways to do this. First, I, I could sum all the rows first. This would give me all the salaries and then sum all, all the salaries. That, that's this number here. But on the other hand, I could also do it just in a different order, namely sum all the columns first to get these S's there and then sum those. And the point is that actually, um, either way, I've summed all the numbers in, in, in the table just in a different order. But of course, when I add numbers, it doesn't matter which order I add them in, I still get the same sum. So this, this gives us all uh, the sum of the salaries. Now we can all divide by four, of course, and, and, and get the average. But importantly, in the process, uh, no one learned anything they should not. We just saw some random numbers in the process. This is very symptomatic of how multi-party computation works. We take the input data, we sort of spread them out randomly across all these guys. We do some local computation and we arrive at the result. So this, this should give you pretty much a feeling for how we, how we do this kind of thing.